SAC 430 problem number three is a Gauss's law problem. Let's draw a picture of this one. We got a negative charge. Call it Q1. Of minus 0.625 microcoulombs surrounded by some positive charge on a spherical shell. The amount of positive charge, I'll call Q2, is looks like, uh, yeah, one microcoulomb, and then we got two microcoulombs on a larger shell. So let's go 1.00 microcoulombs. And then there's a, an even larger shell, a perfectly spherical shell. Having positive two microcoulombs. Um, this first one has a radius R1 of 1.50 meters. And the other one has a radius R2 of 4 meters. And uh, then we're supposed to find the electric field at 3 meters away. So point uh, 3 meters away. So actually any point on an imaginary spherical shell having a radius of 3 meters. Call it radius R. In that, from the symmetry of the situation, inside that spherical shell, we get a uniform spherical shell of charge centered on a point charge. So, due to symmetry, the electric field at every point on this dotted line on the uh, imaginary spherical shell of radius 3 meters is going to be uh, straight outward away from the point charge. Um, I guess uh, I'm saying outward because there's more positive charge inside there than there is negative charge outward as opposed to inward, but it's definitely going to be radially directed uh, straight through that uh, imaginary spherical shell. And it'll have the same value at all points on that spherical shell because they're all the same distance from the center of mass and also from the center of this uniform spherical charge distribution. So. Uh, we're going to be applying Gauss's Law. This is a Gauss's Law problem. It states that uh, the integral of E dot dA is going to be equal to the charge inside by that imaginary uh, spherical shell. Um, I just write uh, on your formula sheet probably appears as I just uh, charge in divided by epsilon zero, electric permittivity of free space. And uh, we're doing this integral at all points on this imaginary spherical shell. Well, at all points on that Ameri uh, imaginary spherical shell, the uh, area, outward area elements are all directed straight outward from uh, that uh, the center of the sphere and E is directed straight outward from the center of the sphere. So the, the two of them are parallel to each other. So this just becomes E times dA. Let's go ahead and write that for a second. E times dA integrating everywhere on the sphere. And furthermore, since uh, all the points on this 
an imaginary sphere that I've chosen as my Gaussian surface. I'm using that as a Gaussian surface so that I can find the electric field at uh, the distance equal to its radius from the center of uh, uh, spheres and from that point charge. But E everywhere on it is what I was saying is one and the same value because all points on it are the same distance from the point charge and from the center of that uniform distribution of spherical charge inside. So I can just say that's I can pull out the E as a constant. And then uh, the integral of dA, that's just adding up all the infinitesimal area elements on this uh, Gaussian sphere, this imaginary sphere. And of course, that's just going to give the total area, which is 4 pi r squared. The surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared, something that you need to have memorized. And the charge enclosed, charge inside that Gaussian sphere, is going to be Q1 plus, call that Q, I think we'll call that, well, that's Q2, actually. And uh, I left off the equal sign. So, uh, a little bit hard to read there. Let me uh, doctor that up a little bit. That's Q2. And it's equal to uh, one microcoulomb. So it's Q1 plus Q2 all over epsilon zero. And therefore, I think I'll take it up here. E is equal to, I'm just dividing both sides by the 4 pi r squared. So I get uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon zero times Q1 plus Q2 all over r squared, or E is equal to uh, I might need a little more room for that, but one over four pi times eight point eight five times ten to the minus twelve. Coulomb squared per Newton meter squared, and then times the, the Q1. This is a, a dot here. The uh, Q1 is minus 0.625 times 10 to the minus 6 Coulombs. And then plus the Q2, which is 1 microcoulomb, or 1.00 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. And then all that's supposed to be divided by the radius of my Gaussian sphere, the 3.0 meters, all squared. And when I substitute that into my calculator and evaluate it, I get E is equal to 375 newtons per coulomb. All right. In advance, I uh, understood from symmetry that the electric field would be directed straight outward away from the point charge. So I'll uh, turn this into a vector by saying uh, there's a direction associated with it. I can't be overly specific with the direction because uh, the point that was 
3.00 meters away from the center of the circle, the point at which I was supposed to calculate uh, uh, away from the point charge, uh, was not specified. It could be anywhere on this sphere. But uh, the electric field is going to be directly away from the point charge. Uh, normally you would think, well, it's a negative point charge, the electric field would be toward it, but we've actually got more positive charge inside this spherical shell than we do negative charge. I had uh, this turned out to be negative up top. I uh, prob uh, would have emphasized that I was talking about uh, the magnitude of the electric field, and we would have had the electric field directed toward the center of the circle. Uh, we would have understood that the direction was toward the center of the circle, but we had a total amount of charge inside that was positive, and so the electric field is directed uh, exactly away from the center of the sphere.